Hello and welcome to Library Visited. In the previous video, we have seen how we are going to add a service builder project and how we are going to deploy that project. What all things we can write in the service.xml, how we will build it and those kind of things. And we have verified that this particular table, which was the outcome of this service.xml was generated in the database. Now today we are going to look into how we can implement local service and remote service. So in order to do that, there are two things that we need to do. We need to tell Life Service Builder that we need local service and we will set as true. And in the same way, we are going to tell Service Builder that we need remote service to be implemented as a part of this Service Builder project. Now, if you have added them true, that means this particular module is able to expose two kind of service, local service and remote service. But that doesn't mean that all of the methods of this particular project are exposed by default. So in order to do that, what you need to do is you need to expose them in these two files, employee local service IMPL and in the same way employee service MPL. So if you see like, uh, let's talk about the local service MPL. If you read the documentation over here, I'll just format it. All the custom service methods should be put in this class. Whenever methods are added, rerun service builder to copy their definition into the uh, local service interface, okay? This is a local service and method of this service will not have security check based on the propagated JARS credential because the service can only be accessed within the same virtual machine. Now the thing is that this particular file uh, exposed is going to expose some sort of methods. Okay, whatever the methods that you are going to write, if you want to write some custom methods, if you want to write some methods which you need to expose for other projects to use them, you can write it over out over here. So what we need to do is the step number one would be to write some methods. But before that, let's have a look uh, what all methods are available for us to use. So I'll just uh, go and uh, click on um, override methods. So you will see like uh, by default, uh, this employee local service base IMPL has provided me a lot of methods which are add employee, create employee, then uh, persistent model. Uh, then we have delete uh, dynamic query which we can write then uh, we have uh, fetch methods uh, then we have a lot of other methods that we want but if you see like uh, the only things that they have provided is like you need to pass an employee object or you need to if you want to create an employee object you need to pass a long uh, which is a primary key so now uh, if you want to write an overridden method which will take the name of the employee or the role, uh, the the email address and those kind of the details that we have pushed over here, uh, we can uh, write a new method. So what we'll do, we'll just write a public, um, we can return uh, the object itself, employee, then we'll just write add employee. Then what we are going to do is, we are going to define some member variables, string, name of the employee, string address phone number salary string mail address etc now uh, you got the gist like uh, how we can write a method now what we need is I'll just press control shift O so this employee is going to be there now what I'll do is I'll create an employee object over here so what we are going to do is uh, employee is equals to new employee IMPL. So this is a class that has been exposed by service builder 
uh, for us to utilize it. Uh, this is the implementation class of employee interface. So now I'll just put uh, like return employee. And now let's start filling in this object. So employee dot set address. I will just put address employee dot set phone number. Then we'll just set phone number over here. Um, it's complaining for what phone number? Okay phone number and then employee dot set salary employee dot set email address so in this way uh, we can uh, make our setters and getters and, and and we can fill in all of the values in this object so now what we have done is we have actually filled up this object now what we need is a primary key which we are going to associate with this particular object so what we'll do is we'll just go over here and we'll just say set employee ID this is our primary key now we need to create this so we'll just create a local variable employee ID which is my long then we will use something in uh, life ray which is known as counter counter local service util we can utilize that dot increment and we can write over here uh, the class name so this is something uh, which life ray provides you in order to create your primary keys and i'll just write it like this and it has going to give me like uh, a primary key for this now, uh, if you see over here, uh, we are already having an object, so we can do it something like this, counter service like this, and we can write it like this. Now, if we look over here, we have something like uh, employee local service dot add employee, and it is going to be just like that. So over here, what we have done is we have created a new custom method, which is going to take some of these uh, attributes and it is going to create a employee in the database using the employee local service. Now that's how we uh, build a local service method. But before actually somebody can utilize this method, we need to expose this method. Service Builder needs to know that there has been a method that has been added and it needs to create this method in rest of the interfaces. So what we need to do is we just need to go over here and we just need to run the build service again. So what is going to happen is as soon as we have clicked on the build services, it is going to know that there is a new method and it is going to start up the it is going to start building up the uh, the files again. So if you see like it has uh, rewritten uh, employee local service util, employee local service yep, wrapper and employee local service. So uh, that's how we uh, create a local method and uh, if we want to create the same method in uh, remote service what we need to do is we need to come up over here. Over here you see like uh, let's have a small formatting so all of the custom service methods should be put in this class whenever methods are ad added and then we need to rerun this service builder to copy their definition into the uh, interfaces right now uh, this is a remote service method of this service are expected to have the security checks so uh, normally what happens is uh, you need to define your methods again as we have done in the in this but what you should do is you should put a permission check over here in the remote services always it's a good practice that you should always have a permission check in your uh, all of the remote services classes so uh, we are not going to look into that as of now but uh, just to give the uh, just to you I'll, I'll just create one new method which is again going to have uh, the same signature so over here I have created this one 
and again it's gonna return an employee so what normally should happen is as soon as you come up over here uh, we should be having a, a permission checker over here so we need to put a permission checker that uh, the user who is actually calling this remote service whether this particular user is having the permissions to do uh, this task or not if not then we will just return a uh, an error message if yes then uh, we will allow him the allow him to do the uh, do the call that he is looking forward for now since uh, we have already implemented the body of this method uh, over here what we will do is we will just call this employee local service and we will just utilize and call this add employee local service And employee and there it is we have everything that we are looking forward for and this uh, is going to call create our remote services calls now if you see over here we have uh, the context name uh, which is going to be LR it is same over here uh, as we see the namespace and the, then what we have is a uh, context path over here uh, this is the context name and we have the context path which is employee this is the name of the the class that we have defined over here and this is how this particular thing is going to be displayed in the JSON uh, detail page that we have in library uh, slash API slash JSON WS uh, that's where we are going to see uh, this particular thing so again uh, in order to build all of these implementation class uh, we again will have to run the build services and you will see that as soon as the services has been built uh, it is going to uh, create uh, this methods uh, body or interface uh, or the imp or the declaration uh, in these classes which are related to our remote services so over here you see like uh, employee service HTTP and employee service SOAP these two are our are interfaces which are uh, responsible for the web services call using HTTP over REST or employee services uh, over the SOAP. So that's how you can write uh, a remote service call or a local service call uh, in your project. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Bye bye.